to me again. Just going to give you a small video about the latest set of uh, goggles I did. This is another, um, uh, I'm calling them dolly goggles. They're sized specifically to fit the American Girl doll. Uh, but as you can see, we have some extra leather here. I think it looks nice just as a little stripe along the side of the eye cup. If you're going to put it on an American Girl doll, we can uh, have you just trim a little bit right here. Cover that with my finger, um, and uh, you get more visible brass, or leave it the way it is. Um, if you wanted to put it on a uh, larger doll, uh, there's enough strap here to give yourself an extra inch on both sides, so an extra two inches of diameter. That that gets you to be a pretty large size uh, doll head. Um, there's a top strap on this one. I haven't done that before. Uh, I think it came out real nice. Uh, just the general design of the of the mechanism uh, kind of screamed, "Hey, let's let's attach something here up here at the top." Um, another thing I haven't done, figuring out how to join the uh, top strap uh, at the back, uh, is I did a um, uh, some kind of a I guess we call it a back plate. Yeah, I'm loving the that's hammered copper. And um, see if I can get some better lighting here. It's not right into my face. And uh, this was a design uh, element that I used quite a bit in my first couple of pieces. The hand-formed, hand-riveted, uh, uh, hand-hammered rivets. I'll take this off. Um, Autofocus here so we can get an idea. This is actually pretty cool, um, I think, or I wouldn't do it. There we go. That's that's about my focal length right there. Right? Um, each of these straps uh, is sandwiched between the copper back plate, and there is a brass washer, and then they are uh, run through with a a piece of fairly heavy gauge. I think this is number number six or number four gauge copper wire. Find that sweet spot here. And then hammered uh, to expand the rivet to fill up the space uh, in the hole. And then um, hammered over to create a nice decorative permanent mechanical fitting, uh, mechanical joint. Um, like I said, I used to use these quite a bit. Uh, I don't know why I moved past them, just working some other some other angles. Turn autofocus back on. And I thought it would be a nice way to bring it back. Uh, it's one of my favorite ways of joining the rivet. Uh, it's very, very secure. Um, the leather is otherwise attached with uh, screws and uh, nuts, trimmed to fit. Uh, a little bit of Loctite keeps those from wiggling loose. Uh, now, the the uh, the real the reveal here this is nice uh, as you can see it does have does have uh, filter lenses one is an amber I'll see how this comes through and the other one is neutral gray I don't have a lot of choice I got a box of these brass bits all kinds of things uh, that I kind of borrow from to make things like this um, the armature that they come down on is copper hammered copper um, where it joins Hammered copper. Um, and that's true for the bridge piece, the piece that joins uh, the two eye cups together is also hammered copper. It's joined in the middle. Hang on. It's joined in the middle by a um, bronze rod and then over top of that is a brass tube that allows the this to flex um, and then the main hinge point for the armature that comes down with the filter lens that has a um, it has a bronze rod that's actually braced in at both ends so what we get is is a, a mechanism so these go up and down um, there is what looks like a pneumatic tube or a hydraulic tube uh, right here. Um, 
that's it functions as a simulated hydraulic tube we can't can't work up a whole set with hydraulic lifters at this scale I mean not not in habit accomplish anything what it does accomplish though is what's called an over center lock when it gets to this point um, the piston and the piston rod becomes out of center and it'll support the weight I mean to a reasonable expectation of you know of sturdiness it'll it'll support the weight of the uh, visor armature which is being pulled down with the springs that you can see here um, this is nice you, you don't always want the visors down especially if you're a doll and you want to look at something without visors um, functionally this over center uh, catch does a real nice job uh, leaving it up and then when you're ready for it to come down you just push it in and it snaps it right back down um, it's not a toy uh, it it anytime you add a moving part you increase the likelihood that something could break but I make a real point I mean it's one of it's one of my things uh, that everything I make is robust and that's uh, that's no different even with this little thing. It looks it looks frail. It's not. The brass tube has been bolstered with what we call facing. Basically, that means that I heated it up and applied a brazing filler to it as if I were going to join it to something else. Um, but the purpose is just to um, add some harder metal to the brass tube. It's rib, uh, rimmed over a little bit uh, so that it's difficult though not impossible to rip the tube off the piston uh, I don't recommend being aggressive with it but uh, this kind of thing I don't think that would be a problem and what you end up with is something that's just pretty darn cool I mean that's that's pretty cool it's it's one of the my favorite pieces that I've done um, so I hope you like it too if you look you can get a closer look here And let me know. Let me know what you think of the brown. Usually I use black. I thought the brown it was a nice touch, especially with the copper.